the National President of the Pentecostal Fellowship of Nigeria, Reverend Dr. Felix Omobude, uh, the former president of the Nigeria Bar Association and founder of Wale Olani Kweku Anko, Chief Olan, Chief Wale Olani Kweku, OFR, honorable members of the Lagos House of Assembly, present uh, on Bobola Honishao, and the Honorable Commissioner for Investment, Trade and Industry, Are on Ekiti State. Are Olumuewa Olumilua. Uh, honored guests, distinguished uh, ladies and gentlemen, and of course, our host and lead consultant at hoofpeak.com, Mr. Simbo Olonfebi. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, let me first say how uh, very uh, honored I am to join you at this uh, presentation of books by Simbo Olonfebi. Uh, Simbo Along Femi has emerged as uh, one of the most important thought leaders on politics and government in Nigeria. He has, through the years, and in very many articles and sundry commentaries, ranging from the economy to development, to international relations, and partisan politics, consistently applied rigor, deep thought, and scientific discipline to his analysis of the people, the events, and the policies that have shaped these issues and the societies and publics that they impact. I think his strength is in his capacity to take on the big issues, the complex ideas, such as ethnicity and cultural politics, and also the more retail questions around the daily disputes on the rightness or wrongness of government policy or their efficient or sloppy implementation, all with the same clarity of thought and presentation. His projections, his projections on political outcomes are eerily accurate, <laughs> and his prescriptions are practical and clearly thought through, even if uh, controversial. His three latest works, The Devil is Not in the Politics, uh, Politics is Not a Game for uh, Gentlemen, and every day for the Goliaths, what manner of democracy is this, is a successful attempt to put in print his thoughts uh, in various interventions under broadly uh, descriptive titles. And I think that uh, an incredibly uh, an insightful uh, review has uh, already been done. But whereby, by, by, by the way in which he has put this together, able to follow and argue with his thoughts on the dynamic interaction of politics, policy, and governance. Central to his analysis, uh, as is central to uh, all this the analysis around these issues, is leadership. As the events of the last few months around the world have proven to us, leadership is indeed consequential. If there was any doubt about the fact that the quality of leadership is central to the fortunes of society, this pandemic has established that to us in plain terms. It may literally mean the difference between life and death. If leadership is that consequential, then it must uh, then suggest that politics may belong in the same existential category, being the production line for, for leadership. Simbo Alon Femi strengthens the point by the metaphor of politics and policy being Siamese twins, intertwined and interlocked, one being a propeller, the other uh, the engine. Success for a political leader, he submits, involves a smart fusion of both, but such that policy drives politics and policies are strategically framed, pursued and executed without losing sight of one or the or one for the other. Perhaps one may add that this is where the purpose of politics is the attainment of power for the pro prosecution of the pu public good, not as an end in itself or for personal or parochial interests. And this may be no small matter, as one sees time and time again the tragedy of self-absorbed, self-seeking leadership. Some have argued that one of the challenges that we have faced as a nation is that of the reluctance of our best minds to get involved in politics, leaving it uh, to the second 11, uh, 
as they say. A chapter from which the book Politics is Not a Game for Gentlemen derives its title speaks to this point. Simbo argues that puritanical idealism can only take one so far in politics and that to be successful and to be in a position to attain power or influence or to be able to influence policy direction, a bit of pragmatism is needed, founded around strategic thinking and an acknowledgement of the fact that all politics is local. To be successful, it is necessary, he says, to approach it at the retail level and not with a wholesale mentality. Indeed, uh, this, this is true, but clearly where the rubber hits the road is the crucial collision of theory and praxis. How much compromise is too much and what is too little? I'll leave that argument for another day. But the other point is in my respectful view, uh, the error of assuming that failures in governance is on account of professionals and other decently engaged people leaving the space to career politicians. I fear that that sort of analysis is not only factually incorrect, because as a matter of fact, very many of those who hold political office are actually qualified in some discipline or the other. And as Simba points out uh, in Every Day for the Goliaths, uh, one of the pieces there, that the decay extends to what one would describe as, as, as learned uh, companies, such as judiciary, uh, the banking sector, etc., which must tell us that the problem is probably deeper. The question, in my view, is what is the elite consensus? What, what, what is it that the elite agree on? The elite in most societies determine the direction, even if uh, the primary purpose is self-preservation, even if that is the primary purpose of the elite, that elite must determine in which direction the society, uh, it, 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 the society moves and, and what society ought to do. I think that what the problem we have is that there is so much concern about self and about narrow parochial interests that the Nigerian elite is even unable, even out of self-preservation, to find a consensus, not only to lead the nation forward, but also to prevent itself from destruction. I had the privilege of working with Simbo and several others a few years ago on political strategy and tactics for our party, the APC. His commitment and passion for nation building was always so evident, and he is taking the trouble to detail his thoughts in writing and put them out for debate and analysis is a commendable, but I must say sadly disappearing activity. In the era of the mindless tweet and other digital enablers of lightning speed communication and the puerile attention span that they nurture, the space for critical thinking on public affairs is narrowing and the public intellectual is fast becoming an endangered category which is why Simbo's latest efforts deserve all our commendation. I'm therefore very honored to invite you to join me in presenting these books to all who seek better societies and who know that better societies are indeed possible by the honest implementation of the thoughts and ideas of men and women who, like Simbo, apply their talents to finding answers to the myriad issues of development. Congratulations, Simbo. Thank you all very much.